Today we are going up in a real airplane and comparing that to a home built flight sim to see if it can be used for flight training and just how realistic it is. I'm Eric and this is The Aviator. This here is my home built sim that I made a number of years ago and I've trained on it for my private pilot, I've trained on it for my instrument, I am training on it currently for my commercial license and it has been great for me but I was thinking, I've heard a lot of people say you know you, you shouldn't use a flight sim for training, flight sim can be bad for this reason or the next. And because I'd used the flight sim so often for training and so often for, you know, getting proficient again after I have been flying for a while, I've used it so much for so many things. I wanted to do a real life comparison. I'm going to go up in a real airplane and then do the exact same things in a flight simulator to just see what the true differences actually are. If you are flight simming, say, um, without proper equipment, that is going to um, keep you from actually having a real life experience. And that's where a lot of these people are coming from. They're downloading Microsoft Flight Sim onto their computer and using their Xbox controller to fly the airplane. Well, that's not really helping you. In fact, that could be hurting you. So what you need to do, and I've, I'll put links down in the description below of my entire flight sim setup. It's pretty self-explanatory and there's a lot of other videos on it, um, but my entire flight sim setup will be down in the description. These are some of the key components you're going to need. It doesn't have to be anything crazy, but you will need a yoke, you will need rudder pedals, you will need a um, mixture, power, and a trim tab. Trim tab is very important. You will need these things to be able to train in your flight simulator. All right, let's get into some comparisons. What I did is we did seven private pilot maneuvers that you'll need to know for your private pilot check ride in real life and in the flight simulator. And so let's just see which one was harder and which one's easier. The first one we did was takeoff. And so as you can see, the takeoff in real life was just a normal takeoff, no issues. Fairly simple, really easy to do. Takeoffs are some of the easiest things to do. And so now let's go over to the Microsoft Flight Sim. As you can see in the Microsoft Flight Sim, even the simple takeoff is a little bit difficult. And I'm a seasoned pilot, I have hundreds of hours, and I'm in this flight sim and taking off, it's not the prettiest takeoff if you actually look at it. It was it safe, yeah, but it wasn't pretty. And so right there, takeoff, actually harder, more difficult in the flight sim. And when I say harder, I mean that if you can master a takeoff with this setup at least, I, I'm not speaking for any other setup, but for my setup, you can master takeoffs in the flight sim, you will be a very, very good pilot. All right, and so the climb out is pretty straightforward. You can see here, I'm climbing out um, in real life and that's pretty easy. You set your trim. Now, if you have autopilot, you can, but I wasn't using autopilot in either of these scenarios. Um, you set your trim, set your, at your attitude and your airspeed and climbing out is fairly straightforward. Um, and you can see it's not hard to maintain a heading. It's not, I mean, it's not hard to really, um, it, it's about the same in this category. Flight sim and real life is about the same for the climb out. For the third maneuver, it's, we're going to do some steep turns. So this is real life. How hard is a steep turn? And we're going really slow today. So I'm not worried about G's, but they're there. Ooh, they're there. But we're maintaining altitude. That's 60 degrees of turn. And all right. And it was, again, super easy for, you know, I've been doing this for quite a while. Real life, second nature. Um, obviously, I, I wasn't perfect. Uh, it was kind of a crazy day when I was doing these steep turns, but it was fine. We did it fine. Um, now, in the simulator, the program I used for 
<clears throat> replaying this, it, it was kind of weird. And sometimes it showed that things weren't the way that they, they actually were. It says I wasn't coordinated. I was coordinated throughout that steep turn. Um, but yeah, steep turn in the simulator was piece of cake, not very hard. So these were about the same. Um, simulator was a little more touchy, so I had a harder time maintaining my altitude, I think. Um, but still, not, not too bad. All right, let's, so let's get into some slow flight. Um, this was, again, very similar. You can see here in real life, we are maintaining altitude, we are maintaining airspeed. Um, the thing about slow flight is you do kind of feel the airplane out as you're, you feel the mushiness, you feel the... And so you don't really get that in the simulator, and I don't know if, that's, if that makes it harder in the simulator or easier. I guess it kind of depends on your personality. Um, but feeling feeling where you're at in real life is actually it can I think it can really help you um, in real life and make things a lot easier but as you can see in the simulator same thing slow flight was easy no no problem there uh, maintained altitude pretty well and speed pretty well the next thing is actually stalls so we're gonna stall the airplane in real life We had some crazy winds that day so yeah i was going backwards um and i was a little freaked out to be honest because um i didn't feel like stalling the airplane with with 60 plus mile an hour winds it was just weird so i didn't stall it out completely to braking but i did stall the stall horn was coming on and uh, i it, it did stall the wing i just didn't break down and in the simulator you can see we, we stalled to braking So stalls, great um, for either one. Number six is ground reference maneuvers. For ground reference maneuvers, um, you either have to have a better setup than what I have with multiple multiple monitors um, and kind of a full surround type thing where you can just turn your head and see out your window and then you know see out this window. I find it extremely difficult to do ground reference maneuvers in a simulator. I did it here in real life and ground reference maneuvers we had I had 60 mile an hour winds 60 plus mile an hour winds and it was fine I did it but it was it was hard in real life but in the simulator it was it's just so hard to see out the window etc that I don't really recommend practicing ground reference maneuvers in the simulator but you can get so proficient in the simulator that when when your instructor tells you how to do ground reference maneuvers you're not focusing on the flight aspect so much as just the compensating for wind and and etc so simulators can still help for that but definitely not nearly as good and for the seventh thing obviously would be landing landing can be can be difficult uh, it changes so much with the weight and the everything else so in real life, you can see me here, I'm landing in real life. I landed dead on the center line, going nice and slow, eased it down. I mean, not a perfect landing, but it was, a norm, it was an average landing, maybe even below average. Um, but like I said, it was right on the center line, dead, everything was, was fine, it was safe. Now in the simulator, you can see here in the simulator, I'm struggling to keep my my um, my center line. I'm struggling to keep my flight path. Um, I do get on on the pappy coming in, but then I, I get too low because it's hard to to tell. My references are kind of off. Um, but then when I actually set it down, I'm kind of messing with the with the wind as far as the rudders. But you can see here, uh, I I came down and I set it down and it was extremely smooth and safe when I set it down in the simulator uh, because I understood when to stall. I understood all that stuff. But I was not in the center line. Um, it was kind of a wacky approach. You would, have, if you would have been in there with me, you would have been thinking um, that this guy is going to kill us all. So that is something to think about. Landing in the simulator is very hard, but I actually think that's a plus for the simulator. Just like takeoff, if you can learn to land in the simulator, um, you will master your landings every time. And when I say this, 
I'm not just pulling this out of a hat. Uh, several of my instructors, they would give me, uh, you're not, your, your landings are rough. You're, um, even when I was training with IFR, hey, you're not holding headings well enough. Because the simulator with my setup is actually so much more touchy than in real life, I would go home and practice on the simulator, come back to the airplane, and my instructors would be like, wow, you just night and day different. You know, they were just very impressed with how quickly I was able to catch on to that. And the reason is because the simulator is so much more touchy that you get into the real airplane, it's like, oh, this is easy because you learn how to do it in the simulator. And what's nice about the simulator too is that you're not worried about external pressures. If you mess up, it's not like the end of the world. You're not going to die. Um, which some would say that's the reason the simulator is bad because people don't take it seriously. But in my experience, I've, I've just, it's only been a good thing in my training. So here's the final synopsis. If you have the setup I have with the things bought in the description, um, then you will have a simulator that is very touchy. If you can fly flawlessly with that setup, you will be able to fly extremely well in real life. If you can hold a heading for just hours in the simulator, if you can hold an altitude perfectly with your trim and without using autopilot, you're gonna get into a real airplane and it's gonna be a piece of cake for you. I mean, it really is. If you can land dead on the center line, you can learn wind correction, you can learn all this stuff, um, you're gonna get into a real airplane and it's gonna be a piece of cake for you. That's my experience. I know some people might feel it's different. I do recommend trying to fly a real airplane and the simulator. Um, that way you can take some of those skills um, that your instructor taught you, you're not developing bad habits, etc., and put those into practice in the simulator because you can develop bad habits and whatnot. But if you can really learn to fly in the simulator, I think you'll be a very good pilot in real life. So that's my opinion. Thanks for watching. This has been The Aviator. See you in the next one.